G'day, it's Adam here again with another quick instant move review for you. Uh, wearing the most unironed shirt in history, but I was wearing a jumper before that made me look a little bit like a college professor. So I think it's unironed shirt day. So there it is. Uh, tonight I caught the seventh Transformer film called Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Now this is quite heavily based on the Beast Wars, which I believe was something uh, within the uh, Transformer world that came out in the early 1990s. Uh, and hence, this film is set in 1994, where we have Noah, played by Anthony Ramos, who is a uh, young ex-military soldier who is just trying to cut a break and trying to get a job to help support his sick brother, who um, has got some uh, undiagnosed medical condition, and they've racked up the bills, mum's working two jobs, and he has to try and make bank. Uh, so he decides to um, run with a, a group of local crims and unbeknownst uh, stumbles upon uh, Mirage, which is a Transformer car voiced by Pete Davison. Uh, and he, dis he discovers that, he, he, that these Transformers are on Earth and uh, that, that more things start to happen. Uh, the Terracons... Uh, discovered that um, that there is a, a, an ancient key which has been unravelled by Elena, uh, played do by Dominic Fishback, who uh, un yeah unwillingly opens this key uh, that sends the Terracons to get it, so that they can unleash an almighty force uh, called uh, Unicron, which is a big bad central forcey bag bloke who's going to suck up planets, destroy things, and move around the whole world and destroy things. So it's really up to Noah, Elena, Optimus Prime, he's back, the big primer, uh, and, and all the other um, Autobots uh, to, to help stop them. And then along the way, they've also got uh, this breed of, uh, what are they? I don't know. They're, they're like uh, ancient beastie things, and I'm probably going to get my butt kicked, but they're like, <laughs> I don't know. Apricons. Let's call them apricons. I don't think that's right. It sounds like an apricot. But anyway, they're, they're prehistoric primal um, robots. Anyway, and, and they come and help the Autobots and they all try and work together to stop Unicon and, and Smurge and all these other nasties. Well, the Terracons. So from that completely unruly synopsis of this film... <laughs> What did I think about it? Well, this film is technically um, the sequel to Bumblebee, which, if you don't know, is the best Transformers film bar none. Uh, Hayley Steinfeld was in that. She rocked it. Uh, it was just a great story. Uh, everything about it was 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 really um, fresh and different. It didn't have... I think Travis Knight directed that. It didn't have... Michael Bay attached to it from a directing point of view, so it was more like an adventure film, and that's exactly what we've got here. Uh, Stephen Cable Jr. directed this one. Um, he directed Creed 2, and it was a, a good film, Creed 2, well directed, and that has certainly been shown in this, and um, Mr. Cable can certainly handle some action sequences, and there's a lot of them in this, uh, but there's also a lot of heart. Uh, Anthony Ramos is a really nice addition to this. Uh, there's a little bit of a wink to uh, Marky Mark Warburg in this film as well, um, being set in 1994. Uh, there is a ripping soundtrack. If you love your public enemy and you, and you love your uh, American 90s hip hop, you're going to be in a good world in this film because there is some great needle drops in this film. And um, yeah, there's some good action. Uh, this to me felt like a, a really nice um uh, sort of sequel, I suppose, to Bumblebee. It does get a little bit messy in the third act. The climax part is, I wouldn't say it's overly well handled. Um, there is some, some, the film jumps around a lot with its action sequences towards the end. And unfortunately for me, that's probably where this film falls down. Um, and uh, there's a couple of times I wanted to really slap Anthony Ramos around, like, get it together, bloke, used to be a soldier. But besides that, 
um, it's a pretty good film. It's got a good heart. It's uh, Bumblebee's there, which is always nice to see, and uh, a lot of the familiar uh, Autobots. So for me, um, Transformer Rise of the Beasts is a really... Um, it's a, just a fun film. It's going to wash over you. It's not going to stick with you. It hasn't got a huge amount of pathos. You're not going to go, oh, oh, this poor thing. You know, it's no Shakespeare in this. This is, uh, this is very much a uh, watch it on the biggest screen possible with as many people as you can with the biggest tub of popcorn and let this film wash over you um, and you will have a really good time. I thoroughly enjoyed it and it's much better than a lot of the stuff that Marvel's been putting out lately. So it's kind of nice to see something fresh that isn't um, trying to break multiverses or anything like that. It's just, it's kind of its own film and it's really good for that. So um, I, I really enjoyed uh, Transformers Rise of the Beast. I thought it might actually be pretty bad but um seeing it's a, a sort of a sequel to bumblebee i really enjoyed it so i would give transformers rise of the beasts a 7 out of 10 it was a really good transformers film and that sometimes of late has been hard to say anyway catch you all next time uh i'm at what is it um i can't remember what the tagline was was it robots in disguise robots in disguise i think that's it i don't know let's just forget about that <laughs> transforming okay good night <laughs>